Welcome, everybody. This is going to be, um, if you guys have attended any of our webinars before, you're going to see a little something different today. This is uh, um, not our normal webinar type of a thing. We've got a really, really cool treat in store for you guys today. Um, I am Jake, uh, work for Land Effects, but we have a guest webinar today. Mark Boys with Mosier um, is here going to show us some really cool stuff. Um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to divulge too much. Um, but the reason you're seeing our videos and stuff this time is because we're going to be showing some live, live demo stuff near the end. So we figured we'd just show our pretty faces while we do this. Um, just a few house cleaning items before we kind of get rolling here is, um, there's a Q and a box, go ahead and click that button. Make sure that you guys have your your questions kind of geared up and ready to go. I will do my best to answer. We, we're gonna have a full house today. So um, do my best to answer everything that we can. Um, and we'll definitely try to leave some time intermixed throughout the demo and, and different things like that, that we'll be able to ask those questions. Um, there is a chat box, feel free to chat away in that thing, but try to make sure that you keep your questions in the Q and A. Uh, this is being recorded and it should be up by Monday. So if you guys want to watch it again and and want to share it with your friends, um, it'll be ready to go on our website. So um, I will be kind of posting or, or notifying you a little bit later um, on sort of a preferred setup if if you guys want, since we're going to have a little bit of sharing screen and video um, stuff like that. So just kind of be ready, but there should be a little triple dot next to our videos. Um, and you'll be wanting to pin Joe's video once we start to do the live demo. Um, if not, uh, you should be good to go, but just from a, a view perspective. So all that aside, um, I am going to turn this over to you, Mark. Okay. Thanks, Jake. Can uh, everybody hear me okay? Yeah, and oh, by the way, um, we will be filtering all the questions through me, so you don't need to worry about anybody responding, and I will be your man. Okay. So hello, everybody. My name is Mark Boys. I'm, I've am i been at Mosier for uh, two years now, probably, probably a bit over that. Um, I am look after business development, but a lot of other things at Mosier. Um, I'm not sure, uh, Jake tells me that some people have already got Mosiers um, and some people are thinking about it and some people haven't heard of it. So I'm going to try and do a catch-all presentation here. So if it, for those of you who have one, you might find I'm telling you things that you already know. Um, without further ado, I'll, I'll jump straight in. So Mosier was founded um, in 2014 by uh, my, well, uh, one of my uh, bosses here called Alan Rock. Alan, who's uh, by trade an electrical engineer, had an idea one day of um, he was trying to drill a hole through a wall and he didn't have the bit long enough. So he thought he'd try to work out, there's got to be a way I could measure up one side and then duplicate that the other side and it will tell me. And that gave him the idea and he, he started work on Mosier uh, not long after that and took him, took him and a team of about three or four other engineers that he'd previously worked with till 2017. And they finally got the uh, Android version out in 2017. And that was just working effectively as an app on an Android phone. And then things progressed pretty quickly after that. Um, by 2018, the company was completely registered. They'd grown to at least about five or six employees by then and um, went to CES when the hottest startup and, and, you know, by 2016, got the iOS app out, and it's just gone since then. Even when during the COVID years, it's still um, we were still accelerating sales. And uh, this week, I think we're on employee number 41 or 42 with a few vacancies open. So Mosier's doing quite well out of it all. But from those early days, it's a completely different um, animal than what it was. The actual Mosier itself, a little, um, some people call it a puck, but the actual little Mosier device itself, the Mosier One, is still exactly the same. It's the app that's um, actually improved year on year. So what does it look like? Well, there's the Mosier in front there. It's about two inches square, has a resemblance to a, a small tape measure. 
Um, and the actual uh, measuring point, I'll show you this again when we do the live demo, but where you see the little yellow, um, by the little blue dot, that's the uh, little LED that's on the device. That little pointy bit right in front of there is actually where the measuring point is. So again, when I'm doing the demo, I'll show you how that works in real life. Um, behind it, you'll see a, what we call the stick. The mojo goes in the bottom of the stick, the phone goes in the top, and it's there purely to save your back. Otherwise, you'd be bending down, trying to pick the mojo up and moving it along, which is fine. You can do it that way, but the stick makes life a lot easier. And we've recently introduced a nice little carrying bag to carry it around in. Uh, and there's a screenshot of uh, what the app looks like on the screen, but you'll be seeing that quite a lot later when we do the demo. So just to give a little bit of technical stuff for people who like this sort of thing, um, it's uh, a question we get asked a lot is how accurate is it? Um, we say it's accurate if you're measuring well, um, definitely under 1% to within half a percent in each dimension. So that's X, Y, Z um, dimensions that it measures in. So it's measuring constantly in 3D. Um, and then it's also shock resistant. Um, if you drop it, we say here from six foot or higher, probably up to about 10 foot, we it doesn't, as long as it's turned off, it doesn't harm the device at all. If it's turned on, it won't harm the device because it's a solid state inside, as you can see, it's a board. But um, it's pretty robust bit of kit, but it's when it's actually working, it's obviously very sensitive because they are sensors. Um, it's water resistance to IP67, which means you can drop it in a swimming pool. It won't, it will continue measuring, but the trouble is you break the Bluetooth connection if the water's too deep. But up to, I've had it down to probably about 10, 12 inches, and it seems to keep the Bluetooth connection to that sort of um, depth. But you know, beyond that, I think you're risking it. It's very light. You can put it in a pocket. We even have a little pocket uh, thing that goes on a belt. And uh, the battery, uh, it's, it um, uh, is a micro USB in the back of it, which is also water resistant or waterproof. And um, it's, the battery lasts about four to five hours of constant measuring, which we do a lot of trade shows. And, you know, those trade shows are lasting from nine to five, which is what, eight hours. And, you know, it easily manages to do all the demos that we do because obviously it's, you turn it on and off during the each, each demo. So uh, five hours is quite a sufficient amount of charge. So coming on to how Mojo One works. Well, it the first statement we like to get in there straight away is that we think we, we think we're the world's first and only motion measuring tool. So we don't use Wi-Fi, we don't use GPS, you don't need a cellular signal to be able to use Mojo. It's purely Bluetooth from the uh, Mojo to the phone. So as long as you've got a, a Bluetooth connection, you're, you're up and running. Inside the little box, going back just to remind you there, it, inside the little box, as you can see on the board, are actually um, lots and lots of sensors, inertia sensors, accelerometers, and gyros. So as they move through the air, and we actually say this on our website, it's a bit like rocket science because obviously they're slightly more complicated, but that's how uh, rockets uh, are measuring their velocity and stuff. As you move through the air and put it down, it measures from one point to the next. And then can, can, um, calculates all those different measurements, as I say, in 3D. So even though sometimes when you put it into plan view, it doesn't look like 3D, it is always measuring in 3D. Um, whether people want it to or not, it will be measuring in 3D. Um, and another question we get asked a lot is, well, how far can I measure if I've got to put it down every six to eight seconds to take a point? Well, the answer to that is it literally is about how far you're prepared to walk. I think the longest measurement I've ever done um, was, uh, I think it was like, I can't remember now, it was about nine point, um, about a kilometre, so about just over half a mile when I walked around the edge of a, a large um, logistics park. I'll show that measurement later on in the presentation. So, you know, that took about 20 minutes, but people measure much bigger areas than that. Um, but it, yeah, it's usually how far you're prepared to walk. And there are four basic techniques which I've touched on already, um, which again, you'll see during the demonstration. Um, if you're measuring an area, which most people would measure an area, so by an area that could be a garden, a drive, um, any sort of shape or area, we would call that a closed shape. And by definition, it being a closed shape is you must start and finish in exactly the same place. I mean, we recommend that you mark it with a flag. We have the, um, we sometimes now use little pe pencils to mark up where we're starting um, because that affects the accuracy if you don't come back to the exact point. So as I say, use a flag, 
choose something that's easy to come back to, like a curb corner or something like that. The next technique is move quickly. Don't dawdle. People will have a tendency to look at their feet as they're wandering along to make sure they're being accurate. It likes to move fast. They're accelerometers and gyros. You should be you know, walking at least about 20, maybe 25 feet, depending on your stride, every time before you have to put it down. So you can cover quite a lot of ground in those six to eight seconds, which is the next point. Make sure you take a point every six to eight seconds. Again, when you see the demonstration at the top of the phone, there's a little ticker that goes along. The it goes green to begin with for six seconds, then it goes yellow for two seconds, and then it goes into the red. And it starts screaming at you to get it, get it down if you've not got it down within those eight seconds. So you have an audio prompt and you also have a visual prompt to get it down every six to eight seconds. And then, as I sort of touched on before, when you are measuring, I like to say treat the, treat the measure with respect. Try not to bump it into things too much or put it down too hard. It'll still measure. It'll still be fine. But it is a sense of an instrument once it's measuring. So you run the risk of overdriving the sensor somewhat. So just, you know, it's just a technique and, it, and it's not the law, but you'll see my technique when we're doing the um, demonstration. It's pretty easy. Um, so in close shape, start to finish in the same place, move quickly, get it down every six to eight seconds and treat it with respect. They're the four technique tips I'd like to pass on. So. Moving on to how Mojo One actually works um, in, in reality, um, as I say, moves in three dimensions, but the we have given different modes of how to measure. So there's straight line, um, which is effectively point to point, um, trace line, which makes you is really useful for lawns and stuff like that that are really odd, curly type, wavy shapes. There's ignore line, which comes in when you want to ignore between two points. And then there's other modes called one called wall mode. We're measuring, as it says, walls. And then you can measure arcs and circles very easily um, by taking uh, like just three or more points around a circle or an arc. I'm going to demonstrate all these soon, but I just want to get across um, the sort of different modes you can measure in. And then you can switch between the modes as you're measuring and going along, which again, I'll show you um, in the demonstration. So here are some examples of um, various measurements we've done, which I've tried to try to get a broad um, uh, church of what we've actually done. So let's start with the first one, example one with shapes. This is a good example of how we measured a closed shape. You can see that the perimeter and the bottom left-hand corner there is 100 and, oh, sorry, 1,451 foot 7 and 16 and the actual area is 27,687 square foot. But the interesting thing about that measurement is it's, it's a nice little um, use of different ways of measuring. I think in there, there's a few arc, arcs on the corners, um, straight lines, et cetera, et cetera. Moving on to the next one, which is which are actually some stairs in Florida at the Gaylord Hotel that we measured. Um, it's a nice example of showing how um, you can see things in 3D. Obviously, they're stairs. So... Um, the total at 116 foot one and three sixteenths is actually the area, the, the total perimeter I walk around the edge of the stairs. However, the handy thing that this is, and I'll, again, I can show you during the demonstration, you can touch a point and it will tell you how high that point is compared to um, the, the first point you've ever taken. So it, it's it's used by people who, um, I know you guys are mainly in, in landscaping, but it's used by or by guys who uh, fit stair lifts and st stuff like that. This is the sort of thing they need to know. Um, example three, which is just a, is that um, measurement I spoke about earlier. So it's 172,000 square foot. I started, if you look at the, me the actual measurement itself, there's one of the dots is slightly sort of light blue aquamarine sort of color. That was 0.1 and then walked all the way around the edge. That took me, as I say, about 20, 25 minutes to do that, which was 3,000 228 square feet that was um a logistics car park it wasn't amazon but the similar sort of thing you see where all the trucks pull up outside the big uh, warehouses to load up ready to take the parcels out that's what it'd been done for that one so it, it can do large areas and then um what i've done is zoomed in on that where it says glen car crew which is where the actual measurement's taken place i've zoomed in just to say when I was walking along, you can see it's quite a, a rhythm you get into in this six to eight seconds. I was walking 
21 foot 7, 20 foot, 20 foot, 19, 20. So you get that general rhythm just going. And it, as I say, it likes to move quickly. So some more examples here of measurements. One that might uh, be interesting to some guys, especially if you do uh, playgrounds. This is a, an actual play, playground. As you can see in the bottom left, it says Shipston play area. This is showing measuring using what we call layers. I'll demonstrate layers when we go outside. Layers is, is fired up by the bottom right hand corner there where you can see it says layers. So the first measurement we do, which is the one that's highlighted on the left on in this screen, is that was um, the uh, ship, we called it Shipston play area. So that was the first play area we actually measured. Again, we started in point one, went all the way around and then uh, came back and saved that as Shipston play area. Then what we do in layers is we go to the first point and the second point, and then we go off and measure the second one, which in this case was the large slide. Then we come back after doing the large slide, go to the first point, the second point, and then go off and measure the roundabout. And by going back to the first point and the second point, that is effectively drawing a reference line. So instead of just being a reference point, you've got a reference line now, and that reference line then is orientated so that it knows how to um, place all the other measurements that you're going to do in the right place relevant to each other. I'm hoping I'm making sense. If you look at the drawing, obviously we did a number of layers there just to prove the point. But, you know, I, again, I'll show, I'll demonstrate layers when we go outside. But the key to layers is um, go back to your first point and your second point, and then go and measure the next thing you want to measure. It even clicks itself into what we call ignore line. So it knows it's going to go and measure something else. This will all become a lot clearer to those guys who haven't seen Mojo before when we get outside, but I wanted to give you an idea of the sort of things you're going to see on the screen. Um, obviously the layers, the second one where it says example six layers, that just shows you how they get represented back to you. You obviously you can change the name of whatever you want to call it. And it's just a matter of, again, you'll see it on the screen, you just say rename, type in, you know, large slide or roundabout, save, and then you just move on to the next one. Example seven, which is a swimming pool. This happens to be the swimming pool at the uh, Westgate Hotel in Las Vegas, which we stayed at when we were doing a, uh, a trade show there. We measured it a couple of years ago. And the reason we measured it, obviously, because it's a great shape for us, lots of curly shapes, you know, to go around using a, a mainly a trace mode to do this. And then you can see that uh, on example eight, that's showing it being overlaid onto uh, an aerial view of said swimming pool. This is a new feature called overlay. It's been rolled out probably within the last three or four weeks. Um, if you want to check a measurement or you want to present something back to a customer or something like that, you now have the ability to get hold of an aerial image from a provider of your choice. Um, it's a, you effectively just save it to your photos on your phone. You then um, go to edit background and then pull the pull the photograph in and then literally just pinch it to fit. It's as simple as that. We're still, I mean, it, it, this is a brand new feature, as I say, only released in the last few weeks. But, um, but I think we're going to be making it even better in, you know, in the forthcoming months. But at the moment, that's, it's as simple as that. Get the photo from a source put it into your photos and then just bring it in and then you can overlay your uh, overlay your measurements onto it, which is really useful for, well, in this case, swimming pools or useful for um, roofing guys, guys who do flat roofing who want to see where all the roof lights are and make sure they haven't missed any when they've been measuring it, can overlay their uh, drawings onto those. So moving on now to the next slide, which is going to be a handover point between me and my good buddy there, Jake. Okay, we are now into the the thick of it here. We've we've actually got quite a few questions coming in just from like a functional standpoint, and and then so we're kind of holding off on some of these deals, and you're going to start to see some of these um, questions be answered here. Um, um, you can ask me is, questions now before I go outside if you want. I mean, well, so you... yeah, no, I think I think all of them will be handled in kind of what I'm talking about here. So okay, we're gonna. We're going to dismiss Mark for a little bit, and he's actually going to go get set up. This is this is the unique part of this webinar, guys, is uh, there's a lot of moving parts. So he's going to disappear, and uh, 
I'm going to kind of show just a little bit of examples, kind of the workflows and stuff that, um, you know, I've encountered on sites and, uh, and sort of show you some, some things that you might run into. So there's a lot of stuff that happens on sites, right? It's not always perfect, um, out there, as you can see in some of these examples, um, stuff that just is completely obstructing what it is. So with this new way of measuring, um, definitely has a couple other additional challenges that um, really come about and you never really thought about before kind of a thing. So since there is that need to position and hold still this device, you know, what do we do in some of these cases? So uh, this first uh, image here, there's a lot of obstructions right there along the the building foundation. So being able to kind of like jump between your little takeoffs and, and set up different pieces um, of the site in different um, kind of modes. I was able to kind of use wall mode and literally just hold it against, and, and you'll see this in the demo, but just hold it against these walls since there was just no obstruction on the walls. Um, it got me that footprint that I could then overlay into the rest of my uh, site takeoffs kind of a thing. Um, the middle guy was an interesting one because had just tons of brush around, uh, but also had a very organic, unique looking rock wall that I needed to capture. So trace mode uh, was great to be able to just pick him up and literally hover him over um, where those walls were. The elevation stuff in that last photo is just really cool to be able to pinpoint exactly uh, the shape of, of a step set or something like uh, Mark was showing in those previous examples. Um, but kind of taking those, and, and we're going to kind of take this last, last photo here as kind of the example, um, and really bringing these into CAD. So like, what are, what are your options and how does that look kind of a thing? So um, something to kind of note just in general is we're used to using AutoCAD. And so we've got our units set properly and all that kind of stuff. We want to make sure that the device is sending out the proper dimensions because we don't want to, you know, bring these lines in and then have them be the wrong size, basically. So um, in the device, uh, in the app, sorry, there is a, in the settings, a way to make sure that your export settings um, are set properly. So this is just sort of an example of of where to find that um, in the app. Now, when you're in the app and you've done a takeoff on something, um, and so this is that stair. So to kind of blend in some of these questions, you know, how is it taking and what is uh, it showing from like a horizontal versus slope uh, calculation? Like Mark said, um, it is capturing in 3D real time every time. So you can see kind of the starting point uh, that I've done up in this top corner and it's projected straight plane out and where it actually landed in relation to everything else. So it's actually finding out what those Z elevations are at any given point because it knows where it started kind of a thing. But so um, taking this guy, clicking that file button, clicking the export button, you have a bunch of different options and um, there are, from a CAD perspective, sending it to a DXF, being able to grab the points itself and import CSV, or if you want to just send it out as a specific image or even share this uh, this deal with uh, somebody else who's using a Mosher can load it back in that way. So what does that look like in CAD? Um, just something to be uh, aware of is the 2D versus the 3D option from a CAD file definitely changes the way that you might be snapping to points and stuff like that. So um, the first example here is the 3D DXF um, option and it'll come in and you'll be able to see literally the, the different elevations and what it's actually plotted. So to be able to kind of have it in a flat plane the 2D option will actually kick everything down to um, that flat plane. Now, it's obviously going to be in this uh, perspective view here. So 
being able to run the plan command uh, and just go to world so that it kicks it into a, a usable state is all that's really needed. Um, so kind of, and that was just like the one takeoff. Now there's, like Mark said, a couple different options uh, using the layer feature to kind of mark out additional uh, sections of your site. I personally like breaking the site up into their own measurements just so that I can, um, you know, not destroy the integrity of something if I accidentally mess up on stuff, um, which kind of goes into a question about the accuracy. Um, the <clears throat> the amount of points that you're taking, it really doesn't matter how many you're doing, but it does increase the error percentage if you continue to make mistakes in it. So that's why I kind of like to keep things in little small buckets and then stitch them together because then I, I know I'm more accurate in a lot of different places. So in this example that you see here, I've actually taken three different measurements. I got the stairs, the left and the right side here, the upper and the lower section. Um, but I picked a point that I knew was my stopping point or a point that I referenced on any other one of my takeoffs. So the arrow pointing to these ends literally will line up with the bottom corner of the stair shape. So um, it's how I'm able to then just copy and paste these in and move them to where they should go to then make uh, a starting of a quick 3D kind of sketch since all of these points are already in um, 3D kind of a deal. So um, it is not geolocating these. So you do need to kind of put those into your respective location. Um, it it doesn't know where they are. It's just basing it off of where that device is. So um, that's how that kind of works. Uh, here's another one. Um, and it kind of shows the overlay um, to my points. And I did these with the layer uh, option for there. Um, but this one was something that just didn't exist. And it was so cool to be able to uh, to have this kind of ability. But this stairway didn't exist on the plans. Like the, the plans totally changed. Um, and you can see that there's a, quite a bit of elevation here. So how you were even going to try to measure this out and um, kind of relay that into the final design was, was kind of a challenge. But I was literally able to set this device up on each level of the step and at the lower level of each step and get that um, entire shape. Um, I did walk around and do all of these different spots. And it just was cool to be able to kind of piece those in and kind of finalize some of the the, the existing conditions on the site. Uh, but there's just sort of an example of, of taking that, those shapes and kind of building that out into the 3D and know that that terrain is literally what I have to work with and stuff like that. So um, it's just kind of really cool. Um, we're going to show a little video on the CSV stuff real quick. Um, this is just to give you an idea that as you're exporting this, whatever takeoffs that you're doing and you use that CSV option, remember that LandFX has the import CSV function. Um, and so we'll just kind of let it go here. So being able to click that import CSV tool go to pick your actual CSV. And again, making sure that your units are right on the export is going to be important. So you know what units your CAD file should be. Um, but just setting those X and Y coordinates, it'll literally plot out each one of those given points. And from your northern easting uh, schedule, you can actually run and see the dimensions. So starting from that zero point, um, insertion point and seeing what those actual distances are northern easting uh, to actually lay stuff out. So um, reminder, um, I'm going to turn this back over to Mark, but if you guys wanted to kind of either pin Joe's video at this point, um, we will kind of turn it back over to Mark and he's going to actually share his screen on his phone, so you actually see the app in real time as you're seeing him walk around. We're gonna we're gonna see if this all works. <laughs> Over to you, Mark. 
Okay, thanks, Jake. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Can you see my Moja screen? Yes, we see it. Cool. Good. We're ready to rock and roll. Hello, everybody. So I should have said, really, we're we're based in Warwick in the in the UK, which is about 110 miles north of London, pretty much back bang in the middle, not far from Birmingham. Um, and you, I'm so pleased this has been Friday because every other day of the week, it's been raining and it's been raining for, months, for weeks and weeks. So this is uh, quite fortuitous for us. So as you can see on the screen, that's the start screen. Um, let me just go back. Mosher Pro in the bottom corner there, which I'll press now. It, if anyone's got one or uh, is intended to buy one, please only use Mosher Pro. There might be some naughty people out there still using Mosher, but the, the old Mosher app, but we don't support that anymore. So please use Mosher Pro. That's where we're doing all the developments and adding all the new features. So here is the stick. Um, Mosher goes in this end, as I said. Phone goes in that end. Another technique tip is, um, here's my Mosher. Another technique is put the Mosher in while it's upside down. So this is the top of the Mosher. And all you're doing there is not putting stress on this little blue um, connecting joint, which is fine. It just, it's just, just good technique. So when you extend your stick, I recommend you have it about hip height. You don't want to be, you don't want to be, as I said, about dawdling and walking along. You don't want to be like this because you run the, chance to run the um, risk of, kick, of kicking it or, or, or even putting it down like that. Keep it nice and, nice and loose in your hands. Not like that, not like that, like that. Three fingers. So at the side, and when you're walking, move quite quickly. It comes with this little holder. It works brilliantly on an iPad. We don't sell that in the pack or on a, a Samsung tablet um, because obviously the screen's much bigger. But um, yeah, it, it fits most no, all, all phones. Um, to turn it on, there's two ways to turn it on. Again, the old way, if you have one, is by double tapping it. Let me just like that. In the palm of your hand, double tap and it will come on. Now, this one has the new setting. Which means I'll pop it in there, hold it at 90 degrees, turn it 180 degrees, and you see the little blue light flashing. That means it's on. So again, this was this, as I said at the, in the um, presentation, this uh, pointy bit here is actually where it uh, takes the measurement. And here, there's a gap there you can see of, I don't know, it's not even half an inch, and the gap between the rubber foot. There is a setting. If I if you go to settings, like so, and you go to sorry, you go to oh, let me just make sure I'm I'm in um, Imperial. Good job I did that. And you top one there says use Mosha stick attachments. You say yes, and it just takes into account that little bit there, there, and there. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to do first, I thought, is just to, when I talked about the different ways of um, different modes of measuring, I'll just do a quick demonstration on each mode of measuring so you can see what each one looks like. And I'll do all these in just open shape so I don't have to start and finish in the same place. So I can pop it down there. Goes red because it's looking for, the, for, looking for the phone. Green means the Bluetooth connection's hooked up. We're in straight line mode. If you look down towards the uh, bottom of the phone screen on the left hand side. I've got mine defaulting to straight line. And that's it. Off you go. Hold it to the side, not gripping it too hard. You can see the green light coming up, going into yellow. Pause now. Oh, naughty. I went into red. You see, that's not good. Simple as that. Walk at an angle. So as I move along, you can see, put it down every six to eight seconds. Now I'm going to do another measurement now. I'll do this in an open shape. I'm going to trace mode. So let's pretend if I'm walking this way, there's a curly line up here, which I'm following. It's gone green. 
is ready to go. Literally, you just follow it round. So like a big arc up here, even like that in trace mode. <laughs> Move it too far then. But stop. It's 31 foot six. If I go to view and 3D view, you can even see that it measures in 3D all the time. When I went did the big hoist at the end there, you can see that it, it that was my start point. Go back, I'll do another measurement. Uh, ignore line, it will literally start here. And if I walk across here, it measures between the points, but it doesn't show up. And that's useful, I'll show, I'll show you what that's useful in a minute when we come to um, layers. And then I'll come to another one. So we're going to do a closed shape and I'm going to do it on this big arc over here. That's about the start of the arc. It's gone green. Go into arc mode. So I go into arc mode and I just have to take three or more points on this arc and it will automatically fill the rest in. Um, the more points you take, the more accurate it will be. So I'll take a few points. Take one here, 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 and at the end. There you go. So it tells me that the, the edge is a total of 21 foot 10 almost 20 foot 11, and then that the radius of that arc is 14 foot three. So the same principle is on for um, circles. We were trying to find a circle in the car park and we're struggling to. So for the EV chargers here, they've got some sort of circle. So well, let's do a circle around here. Actually, they're not circles, they're not perfect circles, but you'll get the general gist. And we'll do this as a closed shape. I'm going to do a circle. That's point two. I'm going to make it go out a bit to make it more circular. If I move there to sort of bring it in a little bit, you see it'll move it slightly. There you go. Automatically <clears throat> tells you what the perimeter being nine foot ten, and then the actual area of that circle is seven point eight square feet. So hopefully everyone's got the idea of, you can switch between modes. I'll come to wall mode later. That's the only one I haven't done, but we'll do a demonstration of that later. So what we're gonna do is measure a shape in, or measure a couple of shapes over here. So we'll go over here and we'll do this one. because I can do some switching between um, straight line and uh, arcs. So we're gonna go into close shape. Now I don't need this because I'm on a corner. But I'm going to mark it, mark it there. If this was somewhere that was completely difficult to find, at least I know where I've started and finished. So I'll start again. Let's, uh, we're going for a close shape this time. Ready to go. Moving nice and quick. Pop it down. Still in straight line mode, up to here. Click it into arc mode, one point, two points, three points. Can you hear it? I don't know if you can hear the clicking, but the clicking is there. And it changes slightly when it goes from green to yellow to red. I can hear it in my headphones. I'm not sure if it's come across we, on the um, audio. It. We hear it okay. That's that arc done. Lick it back into straight line mode. And when you, if, if you were with a colleague or something, and I wanted to start chatting to Joe here, who's doing all the camera work for us, as long as I don't move, 
we can sit here and chat. I'm not measuring anything, but you, you, you can't really pause it. That's how you pause. You have to wait and still carry on talking. But I'm now clicking into art mode. We'll carry on. So two points, three points, four points. I'm not quite sure where this one finishes. But... And then back into straight line, back to my point. There we go. 87 foot eight and a half is the perimeter. 452.1 uh, square feet. The error of 0 0.4. So people get hung up about errors. And it's a, the way we do to, to preserve that back to the user is it's done on an algorithm. And it, a number of points are taken into account. And you won't be surprised now that you really know how it works is Part of it is coming back to, the, to exactly the point where you started. So that's why I mark it or mark it with a flag or just make sure you can easily find it. Second is how you treated the measure me measuring. If you've been bashing it down or bumping into things, that will affect the error value. And if you've been stretching it over the six to eight seconds, that will affect the, the error value. Or if you, um, haven't been moving very quickly. If you've been dawdling along sort of like this, thinking I'm good, that'll affect the error value because it likes to move quickly. So all those four basic techniques, which I mentioned at the beginning, um, they will affect the error value. But probably the biggest one is not coming and starting and finishing the same place. If you haven't started to finish in the same place, there is an option to go to edit and then goes open and go to close. Which obviously I did, so you're not going to see it, but it would, it would close that little gap up for you, but that would make the error value slightly higher. It's up to the user then to take a judgment of how accurate or how good that measurement was. But if you're under 1% or you're down at like 0.4 like that was, you'll be fine. While I'm on this screen, if I haven't got this, but the edit background is there. This is where it says add image, and then it takes you off to your um, various photographs, like I said. It's pretty simple to do. I'll show you other things about um, editing in a minute, like this over here. So we often get asked, what if I'm measuring a, a fence or a wall or an object and I can't get around an object, which I think Jake was sort of touching on when he showed you his um, presentation earlier. So let's see what happens in practice when I turn it on. I'm going to do another measurement and I'm going to do this as an open shape. And it's going to go green. I mean, coming down here, down this wall, let's say it's a wall, for example. Come to this car. And then instead of, I can't get around it, so we'll go around. Sorry, we can't go straight through, go around. Could be a bush. Could be a guy the other day who told me about a combine harvester, couldn't get around that, but he's trying to measure farmyards. It's like, yeah, just go around it. Now we know that this is a wall or a fence or something that goes straight through there. Press stop. So we've got the measurement done. Go to edit, select the point you don't like, go ignore, select the other point you don't like, no, ignore, and it fills it in and it gives it the right measurement in this case of 19 foot five and three quarters. So that's what we, that's, editing if you want to go back and edit things out or add things in. Other little tips we've got on this, on well, any type of measuring like this, if you highlight a point and you can go to edit label. So say that point there was something important like uh, a drain or something that you wanted to make a note of. Type in drain, apply, and it's there. And that will appear on the drawing. Um, let's ignore points. Let me just see what else I want to show you. Uh, let's come here. And I'll go back to that big measurement I did that I showed you earlier. Should be in here somewhere. Bear with me. Oh, it's not in there. I thought it was in there. Let's go to this measurement here. So. I'm not sure what this measurement is. Oh, let me see. 
Oh yeah. So let me go back to plan. So this is a measurement. I can't remember what we did, but it's quite a big measurement, 43,000 square feet. Take that point, and if you wonder what the difference is, or what the gradient is between one end of the site and the other end of the site, you go to the cross section here, the little um, triangle that's on the right-hand side. It lights that one up in red, because that's the point I'm interested in. And then I choose that point, or I can go around to any of these points. It's 300 and just under 360 foot away, so it's quite a long way away. If I click the gradient, even though it's probably flat, it tells me it was going up by 0.6% over that distance, which is a total of two foot one and a half. So really handy if you just want to do a quick idea of which way the slope's going on a, on a, on a site or um, whatever. But there's other ways to do it, which is um, what we would call point to point, which is basically just taking a look at something with a bit of elevation. Just turned it on, start this point here. Now I'm point to point, if I stop here, yeah, I could do it from there, but I wanted to get to this point here, which has got a bit of elevation. You can just keep going. So you can use point to point a bit like a tape measure. But there we are, that's a, an angle of two degrees, gradient of 2.7%, and it's gone up by 0.9, and that's no, 0.9, nine inches. Switching between metric and uh, imperial. So, and the other one I wanted to show you, if you come this way, is wall mode. So for wall mode, we don't need the stick. Pop that one there. So what we'll do, I won't do this as a closed shape because you're just going to watch me walk around the building basically. So I'll do this as an open shape, but you get the idea. Click it into wall mode. Now, if I was doing a closed shape, I'm doing it like that. So I would start and finish in this corner, but as it's an open shape, that doesn't matter. You ready? Off we go. So come to this, put it on this plane. Then onto that plane. Then onto that plane. It's my favorite mode, by the way. <laughs> Love wall mode. <laughs> and what you can see it's doing is when I put it on a different plane, it draws an infinite line, in this case, that way. And when I put it onto this plane, it draws an infinite line that way until I cut it. I'm just going to do a couple more, just so you can get the general idea. I'll finish there. So the point I'm trying to make is, each plane, infinite line, cut, 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 cut. So I went all the way around the building, came back to the point by the window where I started, it would join them all up and I would then have a floor plan of, or footprint of this whole building. You can also, obviously it works indoor out or outdoor. Um, so you can go around a room and if you go around all the rooms and th throughout the, you know, measuring the walls effectively as well, you can make a floor plan of a house pretty quickly, um, which is, you know, another way of, of doing it. But uh, that's wall mode. So wall mode, very interesting one. And the next one I want to show you is proper elevation back over there by the car. Putting my measure back in its holder. Don't forget to turn it upside down, pop it in, make sure it's nice and secure. Clip it in the top. So again, this is to give you an idea of elevation. And I might do layers as well here. So I'm going to start Here. This is going to be my second point. Actually, here, so I keep walking around the car to save a bit of time. 
Then I'm going to go up round here and come back down to this point. So right on that point there, we're doing a close shape. I'm starting in straight line mode. Goes green, off we go. Up to my second point. And then I'm going to take a few shorter points to get the angle of this. So if you want it accurately, you need to use straight line mode. If you use trace mode, which I could quite happily do, I won't have the points, or I won't have the resting points because trace line will take into account the inch or so on keeping the um, measure above the floor. So we'll go up here. And if you, I mean, I, I don't mention, Joe, Jake mentioned it on the, um, on his section, but if you have particularly soft ground, I mean, this is fine, it's grass. Don't try and push the mosher down into it. Worst thing you can do, just let it sit in the crook of your hand. Let the weight of the phone, 90 degrees through the mosher, and it will settle. As soon as it's settled and taken the point, you can move on. Let's swap into trace mode and pretend it's a bit of a wavy bit up here. Back into straight line mode, back to the place I started. I'm trying to capture the points to give you an idea of the different types of elevation. If I just go straight from here now down to there, there, it'll draw a straight line between the two places. But the more points you take, the more like, like the stairs example I gave earlier, the more accurate. I moved, did I move too quick then? No, it's fine. So 77 foot, almost exactly, is the perimeter, 328.6 square feet. So here we have one manhole, two manholes, which I want to capture as layers. So back to the first point. I'm pressing layers in the bottom right hand corner. I'm pressing add layer. It gives me a great big black dot to say that's where I started. And it gives me a line to say that's where you went next. And now you might notice it's already gone into ignore line automatically because it knows I'm going to go and measure something else, which is going to be that manhole cover. So I could, if I was walking a far away way, I could take a number of points until I get to it. When I get to it. And I'll click it into straight line, just to give you an idea. So you can see the two points appeared on the screen, which, I, which haven't been measured, but obviously they took the points to make sure I got to the right place. Here's the manhole, back to layers, hit the three little dots, rename. M -A -N. Manhole. Save. Add layer. Hey, back Mark. to the first point. Mark, yeah. Um, while you're doing this point, um, can you label a point while measuring, or does it have to be done after the fact? Yeah, we do it after the fact. Okay. Um, so that, that was one of the questions or concerns was, uh, do we have to re try to remember all these different points after the fact, and what if we don't remember which one we did? If you want to label something up, yeah. You have to remember which one it is. Okay. Uh, now that might change in the future if someone makes a suggestion. <laughs> well, we will consider that suggestion after this. So across my second point, which is here. And your reference line, by the way, you want to make it as long as possible. This isn't bad, but the longer you can make the reference line, the more accurate everything else is off it, basically, because it's a longer reference line. So back into straight, ignore mode, ignore line, over to the manhole, there's round manhole. Using circle mode. I'll take a 
few points off this one. Stop. There we go. Obviously, it measures it as you can zoom in and see what the radius is and what the perimeter is on both of these. But then you, know, you can label them up. There's a round man. So from this point, I'm going to show you a number of things on the, on the screen. I can save this now to my phone. So I go open, save, uh, enter measurement name, and we'll call it uh, car park. Car park elevation. And then if I go press default and add project, and we'll call this land fx land fx land so if this was a whole project so if you've gone to a house a site a project and the whole project was called had a project name you could put the project name in here and then you're saving this this particular measurement to the land fx and then if, you, if I went off and measured something else, I wanted to save it to land effects. You just find the folders land effects and put them in. So you have lots and lots of measurements within one project, which people say it's very useful. Also from this, you can see that if we go to 3D mode, which is the, there's the, this slope that we just went up. I came from here, that was point, that was number two. And then you can see, and you can see from that's one foot high, that's 10, in, 10 and a half inches high, one and a half inches higher. So you can see the difference as the as as it as it um, moves up. Uh, interestingly, you can just about see that that this manhole is slightly higher than the, the way it's represented on the screen. Uh, and then you can go to go back to plan view, which is pretty in this in this case. Uh, you can go to file export, choose which format you want to send in. Um, if you want to do CSVs, export, and then you can email it or, or WhatsApp it or whatever to uh, however you want to get it into your system. Um, you can then, other things you can do, if I'm going to take that manhole out, these little eyes are supposed to be on the screen, that manhole's disappeared. Take it off, it's back. Um, I'm trying to think of other things I, I wanted to show you while I've got this on the screen. Uh, again, I've shown you the, the uh, cross section like that. Uh, and then gradient, in terms of that difference in height, the linear length and then the actual len length degrees and the gradient. Is there anything you want me to show, Jake, that I've, I might have missed? Um, yeah, we've got quite a few questions. Um, so <laughs> Scott's asking if there's a rectangular feature similar to circle you can measure from one corner into the opposing and get that measurement. Um, that was in the, <laughs> like the first well, well, if you do that, you that tells you it's two foot four. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking literally that you go one corner and then opposite, like take three points basically. And I know it's in the first app and you said not to use that app, but you know how you can take the three corners and it tells you what the rectangle is. I think he's asking just like circle extrapolates what the circle is, is there one for a rectangle? Mm -hmm. Like if he's I'm trying to plotting I'm trying out- I'm trying to think of a way to, to sort of cheat it. Yeah, there, there's not. The only way that I've found- Send me the like, questions and I'll, I'll uh, ask yeah, the guys. We, Obviously, it's quite a sparse car park now that everyone's gone home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. Um, I'll definitely uh, note that question because um, that's one that I've asked before. But I think he wants like from a manhole cover or a irrigation box or something that he doesn't want to go to every single point, but just to literally go from one corner to the other and, and have it kind of extrapolate out what that rectangular square is. So, yeah, you can. You can extrapolate corners. Yeah. 
um, which is, wait, see this one here, which is EXT corner. So that's possible if you've missed a corner, uh, which I haven't done on this particular drawing. So it will yeah. fill it in for you. I'm wondering if we could cheat it some, some way using that. Yeah, send me the question, I'll get it checked out. For sure. Um, and then question, uh, any limitations of number of users or devices to pair with? It just is Bluetooth, right? So whatever device- It's, it's just Bluetooth. Here. No, we used to um, only had it locked down to one, but now you can have, have more than one user, yeah. Cool. Um, let's see if there's any other ones. Um, I answered ones about, does it show the 3D function to calculate the slope and percentage you, I mean, you showed that as well, but that's uh, in there with the gradient and uh, cross section yeah. stuff. Um, you cross section. Let's see here. Oh, can the point be go located? I know we kind of talked about that at some um, point. At this future. moment, no. <laughs> yeah. No, it can't be, but we are looking at adding the GPS from the phone which would, you know, it's not that accurate. It's about within mm -hmm. a couple of meters or a couple of, about six foot. Um, again, we, I don't know if it was someone asking about irrigation, but we're adding that in. Uh, some guys in the irrigation industry have asked us that when they leave site, when they have to come back, you know, two or three years, they, two, yeah, two or three years later, they can't find whatever they need to find. So if it was geolocated, they would have more chance. So yes, we will add that in. Cool. At some point, um, it'll be an update. Sweet. Now I know we're like basically out of time, so there's been a few questions. Um, is there a cost for the app? The answer is no. No. Uh, the app is where free. Can they purchase the device? Um, um, Mojo.com is uh, the only place you can uh, purchase it. We don't go through any resellers or distributors. We uh, for two reasons. One is keeps the price keen, and um, we like to have that close relationship with the customers because most of the things you see, as I've been saying all the way through, is people ask for it and we get the demand. And it's like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll put that in. Cool. Um, there are a one, lot of great features coming. Yeah. Uh, GPS is one of them. There's two or three others, but I can't tell you on a public forum, yeah, I'll be shot. We're, we'll, we'll, we'll not speak of it. Um, is Mosier 2 in development? I don't know what that actually means if they've heard of a we're always looking version. to how we can you know improve the device and i think once we think mojo one is at its limits we will look at what else we can do but we have a team of engineers which are split in between software and hardware and the hardware guys are in some little hut within the office that no one goes into so i don't know what they're doing in there <laughs> okay um and then um People are asking if there's an iPad holder for the stick. I mean, that's that's a heavy, heavy thing to try and. We don't sell the iPad holders. We do have one which we use. We, we take to trade shows and show people, and it works fine. It's exactly like yeah. the same principle. Yeah. But yeah, they they they're, they're okay. great. We don't but we don't sell them. We'd have to go to Amazon or whoever. Right. So, okay. So it's it a standard. It's a standard. It's um, just a thread. Yeah, it's a standard thread. It's standard like yeah. camera. Cam there you thread. go. Cool. Um, okay, last question, um, because they, they keep <laughs> pouring over. Ooh, um, somebody wants to come to England for some training. Do you offer that? <laughs> if they come to the office, we'll train them. <laughs> Sweet, there you go, Jack. Um, the, um, do, actually, with all, all seriousness, we do quite a lot of training at the office. And we, we, we get companies come, you know, with three or four guys or whatever. Well, the, I guess the we best should... way to do the, to do any training is if you do buy one, get the training a week or so afterwards because that's what generates all the questions. Yeah, it's usually relatively straightforward to answer. Yeah, so I would say to a plug for where you guys are going to be here in the states in uh, for the IA show for those who might be going to the IA show. Yeah, we're we're at the IA show. You guys, they're going to be hanging out with us. I mean, yeah, sort of. We're at um, so. Oh, I've got so many shows. We're at the Fence Show in August. We're at World of Concrete in January. We are at the NRPA show, which is the playground show in Dallas in 
October. HNA, I think I mentioned that, or Equip as it's called, also in October. We'll be at World of Asphalt in 2024. Um, I think that's, uh, there's probably some others, but they're the main ones. If you go, yeah. uh, uh, I think if you put them on the website now, um, all the shows yeah. we're going to be attending. And the website's a great place, guys, for going to contact them um, and ask technical support questions and, and any kind of stuff like that. Uh, so I would say we should wrap it up. Um, but thank you so oh, much. The other thing Mark. I should say, actually, oh, yeah. if you send a technical support question, please send it using the app. So go to settings, go to send support email, which is one, two. The fifth one down, write in what your problem is. And then go done, send support email, comes up with that. Now what it does there, this measurement that's on my screen, which is the last one I did for us, that will then um, attach all the data from that measurement into that email. And when the guys get it at HQ up there, they will be able to really analyze it. So they'll say, you've been using the wrong mode. You've been walking too slowly. You've bumped into too many things. Whatever the issue might be, they'll be able to come back to you and advise. Cool. So just like land effects, guys, if you got a project open and it's active and you support, it'll bundle that up. So if you've got a, an issue with a specific deal that you're having trouble with, then make sure it's open and click that button awesome okay well we we uh had a lot of exciting excited people i guess you could say um thank you so much um go get a measure and, and start measuring i'm telling you right now i i carry mine around all the time my my wife calls me a nerd but uh it's it's a fun little device to to get you out of some pinches so well thank you thank you for giving me the opportunity jake and the guys at land fx We'll be with you. We're right by your your booth, um, um, irrigation. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, I feel like some obviously my dodgy accent and speaking quite quickly. I was trying to speak slowly. Yeah, I, I, I think it. we we got through it, so uh, we won't hold it against you. But uh, you guys have a a great weekend, and uh, we will talk to you again. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in.